What up? And welcome to another episode of From the Script to the Screen. And what up? The My Hero edition of From the Script to the Screen. Continuing with season six, episode seven was out. Action packed episode. Jumping into a new volume. Now we on volume 29. Dope cover. And getting into it, action packed episode. Only covered two chapters chapters 277 and 278. But a lot of things going on, as you guys saw in the episode. So, as always, the disclaimer make sure you watch the episode. I don't want to spoil anything. But getting into it, we see that the new Lord of Terror, uh, Shigaraki, the head of the League of Villains, to me, in my opinion, he's basically a star at this point. We see that he's, um, we see that, you know, of course now he has all for one. So he's, he has multiple quirks and things like that. But in my opinion, we see how much of a star he is because we see how quick he's adapting to everything. Um, like I said, with the ending of the episode from last week, we see that the Nomus, they still have some Nomus at their disposal because Shigaraki was able to control his uh, decay quirk to a certain extent. And he didn't, he only had to decay, you know, certain things that was able to um, spare some of the Nomus. So getting right into the episode, we see that he's sending the Nomus against the heroes and he's trying to send them against Eraserhead um to basically take him out the picture we know that Eraserhead is able to erase his quirks so Shigaraki is basically fighting these guys off of um his sheer power alone we know that all for one was just as strong as all might and that's why he's giving the heroes such an issue and um like I always say the kids the kids are stars um Eraserhead and Deku kind of have a moment because we know that Eraserhead was very tough on Deku at the beginning, but at this point Deku has evolved into a very uh, capable hero. We know that he's still young, but the kids always um, go above and beyond. So that's why at this point we have uh, Deku, Bakugo, and Eraserhead engaging with Shigaraki. One of my favorite panels, like I said, at this point, we have Shigaraki engaging with Deku, Bakugo, and Endeavor. And shout out to Endeavor. Um, he is uh, trying to do better as a hero and as a person. And we see that he's, um, you know, he realizes he's not as strong as All, as all Might. So that's kind of why he accepts the fact that the kids are there to help. But he's trying to do his best to... Um, to basically, you know, fight Shigaraki and handicap him. So very dope action sequence. Shout out to Studio Bones. They did a great job of animating this episode. And speaking of Studio Bones, I know that Horikoshi was probably excited. I don't know if he had any input about this, but we saw that there was a little bit of added material. Something we didn't see in the manga, but we did see in the anime episode was the sequence of Makia grabbing the other villains and actually going out and trying to reach Shigaraki. That was something that Horikoshi mentioned in the manga. He wasn't able to, on one of the um, extra pages, he wasn't able to actually draw it out and add it into the chapter. So I'm pretty sure he was, like I said, either excited to see it or had that input where we see Makia grabbing each of the members of the League of Villains putting them on his back and going to run after where Shigaraki was at. And speaking of that, my second panel of the week, um, a scene that I enjoyed because we know how, just like how big Mount Lady is when she does use her quirk and how like um, astonishing she is. So to see somebody like uh, Makia short running around and basically um, causing her problems was cool to see, but also scary. As you guys can see there, like I said, um, Makia was somebody that was giving him a lot of problems. Throughout this whole sequence, we see that the other heroes aren't able to do anything to him at all because they're too far. And the League of Villains also being present, we see that also caused problems to Midnight. 
And when she tried to engage, she also ran into problems herself. So we see just how much of a problem Maki is. And if he gets, and if he's able to link up with Shigaraki, it's not going to be good for the heroes. And it's not going to be good for anything that he leaves in his path. That's why getting into one of the last things that I enjoyed seeing this week, again, mentioning the kids, was, like I said before, Midnight ran into some problems herself and wasn't able to engage Makia head on. So she kind of left an idea up to the kids, leaving the kids to decide if they wanted to engage, try to slow down this enemy or run. We know that they're kids. It's against the law. They're not really supposed to be engaging with villains. They're just supposed to be supposedly back up more um, support and things like that. So we see here that the kids decide to stay around. They decide to come up with a plan. Why Midnight decided to trust Creatine was because during the um, joint exams, she felt like she would make a good leader. You know, she, uh, she showed good qualities about it, quick decision making and things like that. So she starts to come up with a plan to engage with Makia and that's where we're left off. But I was happy to see that the kids decided to even stick around. You know, they could have just ran, but, but you know, being that they're heroes in training, like Thunderbolt said, they had their costumes on and they're ready to go. So that's how the episode ends. I enjoyed it. Like I said, shout out to Studio Bones. You guys have been doing a great job and we'll see what happens next week. Peace.